So here's a quick problem solving example for capacitors and parallel circuits. And the most common thing you're going to have to do, and sometimes the first step of what you have to do in another problem, is finding the equivalent capacitance. So we want to go back to our previous notes and find the equations there, which tell us that for parallel capacitors, the individual capacitances will add up to give us the equivalent capacitance. So it's a really simple equation here. And as an example, we can just add two capacitors. So let's say I've got a 3 farad capacitor and a 2 farad capacitor, and they're combined in parallel, then the equivalent capacitance is just going to be 5 farads. Now most of the time, 5 farads would be really high because we typically have very small amounts. So instead, maybe you've got microfarads. As long as both of your capacitors have the same metric prefix, you can just add them up and it's 5 microfarads. So nothing really that different about it. But what if instead we had microfarads and nanofarads, so they don't have the same metric prefixes? Well, in that case, you're going to have to be much more careful in terms of how you work with this and you would actually have to go in and take your microfarad to be 10 to the minus 6 and your nanofarad to be 10 to the minus 9. And when you add those up, you would have to work that out with the calculator, which would give you 3.002 times 10 to the minus 6 farad, or almost 3 microfarads. And that's because the two nanofarads is really small compared to the microfarad. Now that's if I've got just two. So what if instead I had three capacitors? Well, this equation is pretty close because it's pretty much just add up all three. Same concept here. So it's not really that big of a deal. And if I were to have a 1 farad, 2 farad, and 3 farad, just to make life easier for myself not working with the metric prefixes. Again, you just add them up, and in this case, it'd be 6 farads. So there's nothing really special about the number of capacitors involved here. You just have to add up all the individual capacitance. One of the special cases, though, if what if instead of just random values for the capacitors, you actually have equal or equivalent capacitors? So your first capacitor, your second capacitor, your third capacitor, and your fourth capacitor all have exactly the same value for the capacitance. Well, in that case, however many values you have, in this case I have four, it's that number of capacitors times the individual capacitance. Remember, you can only do this if all four capacitors actually have equal values. But you could do that up to n. So if you had 10 capacitors, it'd just be 10 times the original amount. So again, values here for capacitors in parallel are really easy to just add up, even if you're working with more than one or with things that have metric prefixes. So all of these are examples of finding the equivalent capacitance for a parallel circuit, really the simplest capacitor circuit you could possibly work with.